like to grab one of those to uh, follow along with the meeting. And we also have some listening devices on that table as well. If you're having trouble uh, hearing, you're more than welcome to use one of those. And then also I just want to make you aware that we do have our request to speak forms that are on that table as well. If there is an item on the agenda that you would like to speak about, I ask that you please fill out one of those request to speak forms and uh, just turn it into the, the box that's right there. And then we'll be collecting those shortly. And I do ask that you uh, please try to limit your questions, comments, concerns to three minutes. If you do have a question, just uh, ask the question and then we'll try to address that uh, once you're finished. I don't want to take any of your time away from you. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. The agenda, Mr. Gurry, do you have any? No changes from staff? Council? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 4-0. We want to proclamations, presentations, nothing under that. Swearing in by city attorney and disclosure of ex parte communication, Mr. Williams. <coughs> microphone. We do have a second reading on the Amsdale Storage LLC uh, rezoning 11.5 acres east of State Road 19. That's agenda tab number four. For second reading, if you're here tonight to speak on that, you're required to be sworn in. Stand if you would, raise your right hands. Be solemn and swear from the testimony given this call to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth self God. Thank you very much. Anybody else in the audience that wants to speak on that particular item needs to be sworn in either now or at the time you speak. And also, we will now go through the uh, council members and declare any ex parte communication you have had either for or against this particular rezoning application. And Mr. Williams, I don't know if this at this time um, I do need to declare a conflict. Uh, yeah, you can you can redeclare it again at the time we do it, but I understand you have a, a family interested that's a lessee or something. Yes. We'll do that again when we, we, we bring it up. All right. You don't need to declare conflicts or declare ex parte communications because you're not going to do that. We want to uh, reading, reading of all ordinances and resolutions into the records. Ms. Novak. Thank you, Mayor. We have two ordinances at second reading, ordinance 2019-17, an ordinance of the city of Tiberias rezoning approximately 11.55 acres a property generally located east of State Road 19, west of County Road 561, approximately 140 feet north of Daly Drive from Plan Development PD to Industrial I, subject to the rules, regulations, and obligations ordained by the City of Tiberias Council, providing for severability, providing for an effective date. Ordinance 2019-18, an ordinance amending Section 17-54 of the Tiberias Land Development Regulations pertaining to reclaimed water rate schedule, providing for reclaimed water rates based on the study and recommendations of RAFTELUS, providing for annual rate adjustments through September 30, 2023, and providing for automatic rate increases to resume as of October 1, 2023, amending section 17-55, providing for wastewater rate schedule based on study and recommendations of RAFTELUS, providing for annual rate adjustments through September 30th, 2023, and providing for automatic rate increases to resume as of October 1st, 2023, and amending section 17-56, water utility rate schedule, based on study recommendations of RAFTELUS, providing for annual rate adjustments through September 30th, 2023, and providing for automatic rate increases to resume as of October 1st, 2023, and providing for an effective date. And we have two resolutions that will be read in their entirety during the budget hearing. Thank you, Ms. Novak. We're going to move on to the consent agenda. Council? Move to approve. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Resol resolutions? No resolutions there. Ordinance public hearing. We have first reading, nothing under first reading. We have second reading. It's tab four. And Mr. 
Williams, this is where I need to declare a uh, conflict with my wife uh, leases property or leases a unit from the applicant and runs a business out of that. All right, so the applicant's here. Um, are there any questions for any? Do you all have any questions of the applicant? Questions of anybody? Anybody in the audience would like to speak on this item, whether you filled out a piece of paper or not? All right, Council, how would you like to move? I move to approve. So a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3 to 0. to tab number five, ordinance 2019-18 water, wastewater reclaim utility rate study finance.
percent rate adjustments, and that's because they don't address the necessity of keeping up with inflation. Uh, it's also provided the basis to support your capital improvement program. Um, most of the capital improvements are underground, so you don't notice it, but there's been major, significant capital improvements to the water system, the wastewater system throughout the past 15 years here, all funded through these rate adjustments. Um, it's um, also the rate structure that's been in place has been what we call just and equitable, and that's required by Chapter 180 of the Florida statutes. By just, we basically mean that there is a reasonable relationship between the charges that are in place and it's collected for services and the cost for those services. By equitable, it means that all customers within a certain classification or the classification that they're in are charged the same rate, just and equitable. However, okay, during this rate study, we, we revisited everything as we always do. And we saw two major items that, that could be done. One is the amount of revenue that was projected to be generated from the infl inflation plus one could be reduced. We didn't need to bring in as much revenue as it would have. And that's due to several things. One, the management of the system and the growth of the system at some economy of scale. But we did find that there was a rebalancing that was going to be necessary. By rebalancing, what we mean is that the revenue generated by the water rates far exceeded the amount of fiscal requirements for the water system. And the revenue being generated by the wastewater system was insufficient. So therefore, we rebalanced the rates to where they would, over time, generate uh, the amount of revenues that was needed for each of those major functional services. The program that we laid out with these adjustments will provide sufficient revenue sufficiency and address your capital <coughs> program and continue to address the loan covenants that you have out there. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe, <coughs> excuse me, and he will um, summarize some of the highlights of the rate study. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. So as Mike mentioned, you, have, you still have a significant amount of capital projects um, to be completed over five years, and this includes projects in this um, current year that's just about ending, so some of these are already underway. Um, and you'll notice that there's primary funding sources, there's SRF loans, so it's going to be loans with the state, very low, low interest, low cost, and it helps you spread the cost over future generations that are going to be benefiting from the improvements, not putting it all on your customers now. And then we're also using revenue generated from rates and impact fees from new growth. Next slide. And so if we, if you stuck with your current ordinance, which it calls for inflation plus 1%, you'd be generating a um, significant amount of revenue. You can see on the blue bars, the water is generating large surpluses after paying all the expenses. And the green bars, which you may not really see much or negative, is the sewer. And that's what Mike was talking about is the, there, there needed to be a some rebalancing, the sewer doesn't catch up until towards the very end of the forecast, and we wanted to have that addressed sooner and with lower increases overall. So as you can see over the four-year period here, there was a projected about a 3.5% average increase each year. And on the next slide is a little bit more detailed table, but this is the, this is the recommendation that's in the ordinance in front of you for utility rates. And you can see in the first year, the water is being reduced, and then future years, it's being held uh, constant. And on the wastewater side, that's going to be increased for the first two years at 5.5%. And off to the far right is what a typical 
customer would see, and you can see in the first two years it's around three to three and a half percent, and then it's uh, much lower than that in years three and four. And over the four year average, it's slightly less than two percent. So, as, as Mike mentioned, you know, over the four years, we're, rec we're meant recommending a reduction in rates to what your current ordinance would provide for. Uh, so, it's allowing you to collect less revenues from your customers over these four years. And on the next slide, um, this is compared to the slide, the last chart we showed you, where as um, the bars were more of a U shape, or the purple line was more of a U shape, where in the future, uh, the revenue surpluses were closer to the top of the chart. It's on the same scale here, and you can see it's reduced now. Um, this, while we're having lower revenues than otherwise would have, we're still able to meet all your loan covenants. Uh, utilities in very strong financial position, and we're able to maintain fund balances. And on the next slide, uh, we'll touch on this one quickly. These are projected fund balances over time. You can see that the blue bar is the most important one that's your unrestricted uh, funds that allow you to address future capital projects and emergencies that may arise is still growing over time while you're completing over $30 million of capital projects and taking on new new debt service um, from the loans that you'll be getting. So you're still you're still able to fund future capital and R and R and ongoing needs beyond the five year period that we have here. So we're not setting you up just to just to barely get by at the end. You're still able to continue on, and at the time a next rate study would come in, you'd be starting in a strong position, and you could look at what rate adjustments were needed over the over the next period after that. And finally, the rate comparison. So you can see you're you're in line with others. Um, as we talked about at the at the last meeting, you have you know you've done significant replacement. You have very new assets and your rates are still very well in line with others, and you're looking at a very managed rate increase program over the next four years, so you're not gonna be jumping way up, where we don't know what all these others are doing, but there may be some, some that are jumping up much faster than 2% a year in order to accomplish the funding they need that you all really have already done a lot of the investments that you need, and that's, those are the results of the rate study and the recommendations set forth are represented in the ordinance. Council, do you have any questions of the consultant at this time? I do want to just, um, so if I'm understanding this right, if um, we go with the recommendation, we are lowering the potential uh, rate and if we do nothing, the rate, as you said, will go up more. Second. Uh, that is correct. Uh, the overall typical bill will be reduced. Right. Okay. We have two speakers on this. I'll have the city clerk call the two speakers up. Thank you. Jim Carrick, if you could come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Good afternoon, Jim Carey, Bay Tree, 705 Juniper Way. Uh, I don't understand when he says there's a decrease and at the final line on the program, on the screen, it was a 3.5% increase total. So I don't understand when he says there's a decrease and yet back line says three and a half percent increase. I just want you people to understand that most of the people in this area are retired people. Their income does not go up as much as your building goes up. My water bill is over a hundred dollars a month. We don't do anything special. We don't water the lawn, anything. The water bill is over $100 a month. And to me, that is ridiculous. And it's also ridiculous to the people that are snowbirds. We live here permanently. 
and the snowbirds get charged almost that much when they go back up north and don't use any water, any sewer, anything. No garbage, no nothing. And they're paying 80 to 85 dollars a month for no use whatsoever. It's just not right. I think the city has got to back up a little bit and start living within the means of what they have available. Just like all the other people in this city. If you don't have it, you don't spend it. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so we, uh, we have requested to speak forms that were filled out. Did you fill out a form? I did. Yes, we're going to read the next speaker. Go we'll call you up. Rodney? 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 Rodney. Go ahead. Go. All right, you're up. Rodney Deal, 2400 Baywater. Uh, my question is, is, does this increase uh, pay for the obligation to the water department incurred by the pavilion of something like about two and a quarter million dollars? In reality, the pavilion is never going to be profitable and will always have, it's not going away, but it will always have to be supported. Is this increase going to pay for that two and a quarter million dollars, which has been static, it's not being reduced? Is that in this in this increase? Well, is, do you have any other questions? We'll definitely address uh, any questions that you have. But do you have anything else that you would like to ask other than that? That's my question. Okay. All right. We do not have any other speakers registered to speak. Sure, I think the first question was, is the rate going up or down? The rate is going up. And it is uh, going up on an average of 1.9 for 5% over the four year period. So the rate is going up a little less than 2%. The inflation rate is about 2%. So what they're calling for is the rate to go up consistent with the national inflation rate. So the cost to pay for fuel to run the pumps, the cost for um, chlorinating and fluorinating the water, in theory, goes up consistent with the inflation rate. So the cost to provide water and sewer is going up consistent with the inflation rate and the fee that you'll pay is going consistent with the inflation rate. So that was, I think, one of the questions was, is it going up? And the answer is, it is consistent with the national inflation rate. Uh, the other was uh, the, I think it was maybe a comparison of how other cities are doing. Um, the proposed rate is less than Umatilla, less than Mount Dora, and about the same as Eustis. So the proposed utility rate is consistent with the Golden Triangle, actually a little less than what other utilities are charging for their citizens. Uh, and the base rate, you had a question I think about um, if I leave uh, and go up north, I'm still charged a base rate. And that is true. Uh, there is a cost to uh, maintain the system, whether you're using water or not. And what the utility, um, the folks that set up this utility many years ago said, um, everybody should contribute to the um, loans and bonds to build the plant. And if you leave town, um, kind of like leaving your house, you still have to pay for the mortgage on the house, even though you're up north. You still have to pay for the mortgage on the water plant and the sewer plant, even if you're up north. 
but you're not using water, so you're not going to pay for the water you don't use. So if you do go up north, and you leave your house here, and your water here, and your sewer system here, you'll pay for the mortgage on the house, and you'll pay for the mortgage on the sewer plant and the water plant. You will not pay for water or sewer that you're not using. When you come back from up north, and you turn the electric lights on, and you start running the water, you'll pay for the electric bill, you'll pay for the water that you use. So I think that was the answer to why are we paying for um, the water and sewer base rates if we're gone. You're really paying for the cost of having a plant and water ready for you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. I think the other question was, does the utility rate uh, being funded by the pavilion or have to do with the pavilion? Uh, the pavilion is its own uh, uh, enterprise. Uh, it's about $18,000 uh, short of breaking, uh, breaking even this year operationally. It's uh, about the best it's done in its history. Uh, we're pretty excited that uh, hopefully next year it'll be breaking even um, operationally. So uh, the pavilion is very close to breaking even as far as income and expenses goes operationally and it does not fund the water department and the water department uh, isn't funding the pavilion. So those are the four questions that I got and the answers that I can provide back to you. Thank you, Mr. Jury. Sir, how is that uh, obligation? Sir, I'm sorry. We we don't accept people just shouting out of the meeting. I'm sorry. We, he's answered your question, but thank you very much for your input. I would like to add one thing. If you have additional questions, please come see me. Be happy to sit down with you. I'm right here in City Hall. Come on up anytime, appointment or no appointment. Ask for John Drury. We'll sit down and I'll answer any questions you have on this uh, that you have on the city. Email a council member, call us. We're more than happy to, to discuss any items that you would like to discuss at any time. Uh, but just sit right now. You know we uh, we just can't have people just you know shouting out questions. But thank you very much for your concern, council. You have questions. All right. How do you want to move on this? Yeah, I'm going to ask one question, I guess. I, just to clarify, so in the next four years, total, we're looking at 1.95%. That is correct. Average. Over, over the four years. Okay. And, Ms. Hoban, if we do nothing, if we do not approve this tonight, what would be the average rate? Per year, two point nine three percent. Because so, the current ordinance would remain in effect. Because we currently have an ordinance in effect that would increase by that amount if we vote on this um, that we have before us, it will lower that increase. And those funds can only be used for. Those are water, wastewater for operations, debt service. Um, normal cost that you would that you see in the budget is what it funds. It's not considered restricted, but it's an operational fund, and we do pledge the funds for our debt. And when is the next uh, study utility study rate study? Vice Mayor, we will begin our study in. 2023 at the end of this okay. probably about six months before the fiscal year ends or not nine to six to nine months all right i'll make a motion to approve okay. all right we have a motion and a second any more discussion all right all those in favor aye, aye. motion carries four zero we'll move on to General Government, tab six, school resource officer, be the police department. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. For the record, I'm Lieutenant Jones, the various police department. I'm here today on tab six, school resource officer. The various police department provides one police officer to the various elementary school as a school <coughs> resource officer. This is the second year in which the various police department provided such services. When school is not in session, summer break, or holidays, the officer will fulfill other roles and functions within the department. There are two officers before the council. Officer one authorized staff to execute the agreement for the SRO at the Tiberias Elementary School. Officer two is to do 
not authorize staff to execute an agreement with Lake County School Board for an SRO at the Berry Elementary School. Staff recommendation is to recommend option one, and the fiscal impact is identified in the summary. And I, I've updated the summary, and it should be in your um, folders. Okay, you've got it. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Lieutenant Judge. Uh, any questions, Council? Okay. I would like to move. Make a motion to approve. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. Now we're going to move on to tab 7, to various opt-out option regarding the Eustis ISBA to the administrator. Previously, the city negotiated an interlocal service boundary agreement known as the ISBA with Lake County and all its surrounding cities. Including Eustis, this agreement was successfully negotiated and executed by all parties, Lake County, all cities, including the city of Tiberias. The ISBA sets the future boundaries of a city. Eustis is now negotiating their ISBA with Lake County. Attached, I've included the uh, resolution initiating their ISBA negotiations with Lake County. They are currently uh, planning to designate all of their current JPA, that's their joint planning area. It's Pretty much the same thing, uh, it's very close to an ISBA, a little different. But that JPA that they currently have is what they would like to make as their ISBA. Uh, and then they uh, plan to do similar to what all the other cities, and that is voluntary annexation, contiguous properties, including annexation that creates enclaves, and of course the new E911 system addressing standards. Lake County has invited the Berries to the Eustis negotiations table in the formation of this ISBA, which is protocol when forming an ISBA. Both resolutions and proposed boundaries shown limits the ISBA and Eustis to the current JPA, which has been in existence since 1987. Therefore, as the ISBA proposed by Eustis will not affect Tiberis, the invitation by Lake County for Tiberis to participate in the uh, negotiations on the Eustis ISBA, we believe should be respectively declined. And uh, we are recommending that the council opt out of negotiations on the U.S. ISBA creation. Back to you. Council, any questions? You're going to send off a nice letter that says thank you, but no thank you. Correct. And this won't make <coughs> us a you look like a jerk. <coughs> show them off. Is it going to make us look bad? Uh, no, probably be the other way around. It'll be thank you for. It's like we were trying to interfere. Yes. Good question. Good question. Make a motion we approve option one. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. Right. We're going to move on to tab number eight Impact Lake invitation to road maintenance funding information session public works. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council. Staff is seeking which council members that would like to attend and that play. I'm happy to answer any questions that they have. And uh, Impact Lake is what? Impact Lake County is. Let me go back to this. It's part of Lake County, isn't it? It's part of Lake County. They're doing a study. They're having a, the invitation was attached to the agenda. So they're doing a, um, it's like a study to see if, uh, about the gas tax. For the five cents gas tax. That is correct. It's all about the road. That is correct. Correct. It's an invitation to come down to meet with all your uh, sister cities in Lake County, meet with Lake County 
and discuss whether a five cent local option gas tax is um, a resource that should be explored for funding all of Lake County roads, of which a portion would come to all the municipalities. Uh, it's an informational meeting in Claremont uh, at noon on a certain day, October the 16th. That's correct. And I uh, just need to know who from this council uh, would like to attend so that I can properly uh, advertise the meeting uh, if two or more of you uh, will be attending. James and I will obviously be attending the meeting, getting the information, bringing back the information to you uh, on whether uh, Lake County would or would not move with a local five cent gas tax in the future. Anybody interested in attending? I'm interested, but I can't attend. I've been arrested and would possibly be able to attend that. Yeah. Mr. Stevenson, would you? Or if you uh, would be interested in going, because I think we can have more than one customer. We just need to know if we need to advertise it. I like that. I like that. Uh, right. Everybody's always complaining about roads, so you know, I know it's five cents, and that'll be a problem. But you know, it's not like they're going to be going to sell them, but it's like that's a late counter. It's not a carry. But you said some money would be going to be in the municipality. That's correct. We'll get a full portion of that. Yeah, that'll give us money to fix our Tavares roads, too. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, how about if I do attend it? Yes, I'll be your backup. Maybe we'll just go together. Well, we can go ahead and probably say we possibly have at least two council members. That way we can advertise it. I'll do that. Very good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nothing else needed on this item. All right. We're going to move on to tab number nine, legislative delegation meeting. City Administrator. Every year, the legislative delegation uh, invites uh, the cities and others to meet with them at the state college to identify any issues for the upcoming legislative session. The legislative delegation, which is made up of uh, Senator Baxley, Representative Sullivan, Representative Sabatini, and Representative Haig, and Stargo, uh, Senator uh, Stargo. An opportunity is presented to the council to um, identify some issues. I've identified some issues for you to consider. Uh, one is golf cart crossing over state roads. As you know, we have uh, the first golf cart ordinance in Lake County. Others have followed us. Uh, and we have uh, gotten permission to cross one state road, State Road 19. We do not have the permission to cross uh, State Road 441. And so one of the initiatives would be to uh, take a look at that. We write a letter about every year asking the state to consider that crossing, and it's usually denied. We do have people on the other side of 441 that would like to come to the downtown in their golf carts, uh, and at this time, uh, that crossing is available. So one of the legislative initiatives could be golf cart crossing that the uh, legislative delegation could uh, move forward through the legislative process. We rely on the state aviation program to grow our uh, America Seaplane City. Uh, it's a very strong program, uh, and we would look to have our legislative delegation continue to support the state aviation grant program. Uh, we're one of uh, a few airports that get grants from the state aviation program because we are an airport, and so we would like to see that continue. The Phase 2 stormwater program, we have fix the stormwater runoff program from about the high school down to our lakefront. We have all the way to 441 to go. We have a good program. We're going into uh, that area uh, to improve the stormwater program. And we would like to um, look at a $750,000 grant to improve the stormwater program for um, the high school and north thereof. And as you all know, when we fix the stormwater, we pave a road. Many of the roads you see in the downtown, they're all repaved and redone, are through stormwater grants. So it's a um, kill two birds with one stone program. You take care of your stormwater, you take care of your roads. Uh, they don't provide grants for roads, they provide grants for stormwater. The other is we have a history museum that is moving into the 
uh, old uh, train station that the fire department used to be in. We have a senior center that we're moving forward with, and we have a library expansion. Um, what we would look for is for you to approve these initiatives, and then I just need you to um, rank the grant funding requests. We've got one, two, three, four. If you uh, like that um, ranking, that is the ranking we would move forward with. I will say that um, they usually only look at the top three. And uh, I would also say that stormwater has a higher chance of statewide legislative appropriations than a library or senior center. That reason being is that the legislature is looking at funding things that have a statewide benefit. So if you're looking for a vote from a senator in Jacksonville or Naples on one of your projects, they will look favorably at a stormwater project because that cleans up your lakes, which cleans up your rivers, which cleans up the state. If you're looking for a legislative approval and a governor's approval for a local project, it doesn't fare so well. So that's why you'll see stormwater, wastewater, water, usually ranked at number one in these appropriations because they have a higher chance of success than your local projects which tend to get cut either in committee or the gov governor's line item veto process. So before you is the request to approve the initiatives that we would present. Uh, I'd like to find out who would like to present. We can have a council member present it. I can present it. We've done it both ways. And uh, just need you to rank one, two, three, and four in the order you would like them to be moved forward through the legislative appropriations process. Back to you. Council? I like the ranking as you have it listed. And as much as I would like to attend, I will still be at the airport when it begins. Mr. Stevenson? Um, yeah, I, like, I, don't, I don't think I could rank history, senior center, I think they're all good projects. Uh, we've discussed all of them. So I don't know which one would be better in any regard. Uh, October, what was it, 9th? I just, I, almost, at 1.30. I mean, I feel like I could do this. I, you know, I kind of want to volunteer Kirby. I think Kirby, or I should say Mr. Smith, but he's not here. He'll beat me up if I volunteer him about the month. But, but uh, this just seems like, I mean, this is right up his alley. But uh, I, I would do a yes on this, and then unless I'm stepping on toes, Mr. Sister. Well, no, I think we could do the same thing. I like the ranking. I definitely am interested in attending this just because these are all things that I've worked on forever. I mean, these are these are all committees, and I've been the liaison for all these different things that we've been working on. And I have definitely uh, would like to get my two cents worth in about the uh, crossing the golf carts on uh, Highway 441 because that's another one of the projects that I've worked on from day one. So I wouldn't mind uh, attending this uh, with you, Mr. Drury. Your presentation and be there as backup to do what I do best. So. Yeah, if she wants to go, I can do like a backup. You're all welcome to attend. This is open to all of you. We can all it can just all be whether Lori and I present or somebody else and I present. You know, that's what I'm. Yeah, I I like the rankings. Uh, you know, I agree with the. Uh, the golf cart crossing, I know that we submit that every year, try to get that you know approved on 441 there. Uh, we have it on 19, so you know, maybe one day we can get that approved. I do like the, uh, the stormwater improvement project being at number one. Like you said, that is one of the projects that you know probably will have the more likelihood of getting funded. And I know I was fortunate enough to go to the Tallahassee and lobby for the, uh, the funding last time, and I would like to be able to do that. Get as well. So I mean, I'd um, also like to go and attend Miss um, Fister and Mr. Stevenson, and if we could all possibly try to go to that. So I think uh, we'll go ahead and 
move with that. We don't need a motion for this, correct? We just move to approve the ranking as stated and the initiatives as stated. I'll make a motion to uh, option one and we accept the uh, rankings and the initiatives and the people who will be. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? The senior center in the library, Mr. Drury, you were saying that the top three would have the best chance. You know, I'm part of the historical society, so I kind of feel like a dog, but I just want to say this, and then you guys tell me if I'm right or wrong. If the senior center and the library expansion go together, would it make sense instead of having them three and four where they could be split up, would it be better to have them two and three so they could go together? If, the, if only the top three have a good chance? Does that make sense to anybody it, other than me? It does, but the dollars are so high that you're not going to get it. Because okay. Okay. now you go to a $3.6 million program. I'm done. Okay. Any more discussion? All right, we have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. So now we have the budget hearing, but that cannot take place till 505. .05. So we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, let's see new new business. Is there any new business? Any old business? All right, we're going to move on to the historical perspective, tab 12, to various historical society. Ms. Betty Burley. Thank you, Ms. Burley. Okay, we're going to move on 
want to audience to be heard. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard? No? Oh, okay. Mr. Wiggis, if you can state your name and address. Luke Wiggis, 110, on Anthony Street, Tiberi's Council, uh, Mr. Drury, and directors. This Friday, this is the 20th of September at 6 p.m., we are having the first annual Hispanic Heritage Opening at the Lake County Museum of Art. And on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Museum, we'd like to invite each and every one of you. We have three artists that have come from other parts of the state to join us uh, and exhibit at the museum. So we'd love to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We're going to move on to reports. Mr. Drury. Uh, two things. The next council meeting, October the 2nd, Wednesday, uh, we will have uh, three, only three council members here. Uh, two of our council members will be representing uh, the sit this city at the annual America in Bloom uh, conference. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your personal lives and professional lives to do that uh, for this city as we uh, see who gets awards and learn a lot about making our city um, attractive. Uh, the following meeting is October the 16th. And that is Council Member Kirby Smith's last meeting. I would like to do, as we've done in the past, a farewell and thank you. Uh, not a roast. Maybe yes, maybe no. Not a roast. Uh, at 3 o'clock, before the council meeting. And people usually come anywhere between 3 and 4, coming at 3.30, 3.15, 3.45. Uh, he doesn't know anything about it. Uh, he'll know soon. Uh, and we'll, um, we'll do a couple of fun things. Um, and kind of talk about the last, what, 11 years? Uh, he's been on the council and the good times, the bad times, the in-between times. And wish him well in his new endeavor as he uh, leaves us um, at his last meeting. And then at 4 o'clock, we'll have our regular city council meeting. That's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Novak. I don't have anything. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Jones. Oh, thank you. Mr. Rupik. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Tweedy. Mr. Smith is not here this evening. Just in case any of y'all are wondering, today is National Cheeseburger Day. So we have one of your favorite, very dear after the annual delicious and healthy cheeseburger. That's all I have. Thank you. I do you have one thing. We have installed our new city limit sign on our state roads. We have a sign today. If you haven't noticed, we drop down the city. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing today. Thank you. And important news, I just got a flash on my phone that McDonald's is selling a 69 cent cheeseburger in respect of National Cheeseburger Day, uh, today only. So uh, that's important. Um, but I, I know I've said it a couple of times, I'm going to say it again because I want to dovetail onto Lou Boigas, how clever she was. Friday night is a multi-layered night of of arts and culture. So as you well know, it's our concert also in the square with many layers of activities and talent and that sort of thing. So folks can stroll through the town, walk down to Lou, uh, walk down to us, and talk about a walkable event. That's just fabulous. So thank you for thinking of that. If you did, it was very clever. And that's all I have. All right. We have nothing here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the uh, neighbor to the Garber rezoning and annexation that you recently approved filed an appeal in the circuit court and we'll be handling that. Our response is due in about 30 days. All right. We're going on to council reports. Ms. Bogus. I have nothing to report. Mr. Stevens. Uh, one thing, one thing tonight. Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, the um, newsletter that uh, I think Ms. Burley was holding up, that thing was awesome, man. I was reading that. I sent an email off to Mr. Drury when I saw it. My gosh, I just carried that around in my pocket. 
So when people start talking about fairies, I can show them all the great things. I was showing it off to folks at work when I opened the, uh, my mail and got it. And everybody thought it was so cool. There's so many cool things going on. Um, but I, I think that's really neat what you did there with that newsletter. So awesome. Ms. Fister. Uh, let's see, we have much time? Seven minutes. Seven minutes. I don't have anything. Um, why don't we, I'm, I don't have anything to report, so let's, uh, let's take about a three or four minute recess and we will come back and we will get started on the budget hearing. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have the budget hearing for fiscal year 2019 to 2020. Final village budget. So I guess we have uh, Mr. Burry. Sure. Uh, kick it off. I'd like to uh, provide a few highlights of the budget before turning it over to our finance director. The proposed debt service millage rate is decreased. The proposed property tax rate is decreased. The proposed 1.6% operational budget increase is less than the current inflation rate and significantly less than the forecasted inflation rate for the year that this budget covers. The proposed reserves for this city is increased. The Florida Benchmarking Consortium continues to identify Tiberias as one of the most efficient cities when compared to other Florida cities of similar size. The budget addresses expanding the library, the history museum, the senior services program, and the road paving program, as well as rebuilding the children's Wooten Wonderland playground. It calls for a complete rebuild of the seaplane base and marina with 98% of it being paid for by insurance proceeds. Property values continue to grow in this city. Due to this city's economic development program, new business startups, including manufacturing, and medical are at an all-time high. With our newest downtown manufacturing company, Sunday Cool, opening up its doors with 65 new employees. According to the Honorable Carrie Baker, property appraiser, Tavares had more businesses open up this past year than any other city in Lake County. Yes. We are number one in Lake County with Claremont at number two. Also, according to the Honorable Carrie Baker property appraiser, Tavares had the greatest proposed millage rate decrease of any other city in Lake County. We are America's seaplane city. I'm proud to live here and call this my home. I'm proud of this city's accomplishments, and I'm proud of this budget. With that, I would like uh, Lori to go ahead and present it, and then open it up for public hearing and comment. Lori? We need to start by reading, the, uh, reading everything in its entirety. We have two resolutions, first resolution number 2019-07, a resolution adopting a final millage rate of 6.9500 for the City of Tiberias, Florida, for ad valorem taxes for fiscal year 2019-2020, setting forth the percent by which the millage rate is greater than the rolled back rate. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Tiberias, Florida, whereas the City of Tiberias of Lake County, Florida, on September 6th, adopted the 2019-2020 fiscal year tentative millage rate following a public hearing as required by Florida Statute 200.065, whereas the City of Tiberias of Lake County, Florida, following due public notice as required by law, held a second public hearing on September 18, 2009, 
19, as required by Florida Statute 200.065 on the 2019 2019-2020 millage rate, and where is the gross taxable value for operating purposes not exempt from taxation within Lake County has been certified by the county property appraiser to the city of Tiberias as $978,291,217. Therefore, be it resolved by the City of Tiberias of Lake County, Florida, that one, the City of Tiberias fiscal year 2019-2020 operating millage rate to be levied is hereby set at 6.9500 mills, which millage rate is greater than the rolled back rate of 6.7733 by 2.61%. Two, the voted debt service millage rate is set at 0.2932 mills for fiscal year 2019-2020. And three, the resolution will take effect immediately upon its adoption. And then we also have resolution 2019-08. A resolution adopting the final budget for the City of Tiberias, Florida for the fiscal year 2019-2020. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Tiberias, Florida, whereas a public hearing on the tentative 2019-2020 budget was held at the Tiberias City Hall Council Chambers in the City of Tiberias, Florida, Lake County, Florida, on Friday, September 6, 2019, at 5.05 p.m., as required by Florida Statute 200.065, and whereas the general public was giving an op given an opportunity to express its views pertaining to the tentative budget, and whereas the City Council approved the tentative budget for 2019-2020, and whereas the second public hearing on the proposed 2019-2020 budget was held in the council chambers at the Tiberias City Hall 201 East Main Street in the city of Tiberias, Florida on Wednesday, September 18, 2019 at 5.05 p.m. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the budget for 2019-2020 fiscal year for the city of Tiberias, Florida is hereby adopted by the Tiberias City Council in the amount of $73,818,967 at public hearing on this 18th day of September 2019. This resolution will take effect immediately upon its adoption. Thank you, City Clerk. Thanks, John, uh, Mayor, Council. I want to tag on to some things that John had mentioned and put into the record. And as with the millage and budget, the millage is required to be considered by the board first before the uh, budget is voted on. And some of the things we're required by the state to get into the record is the things supporting the millage that you will vote on here tonight. So with that said, I'll just, I may be redundant in some of the things that were already said. The total budget for FY 2020, all funds, total $73,818,960. $7. That's a fully balanced budget. The general fund budget is $19,169,250. Excuse me. That budget is um, a fully balanced budget. The budget includes a similar level of service to our residents. The budget, the, the, the millage supports a similar level of service. The millage rate is a decrease from 7.1119 mills to 6.950 mills, which is 2.27% lower than the last year's adopted millage rate. The debt service millage rate is a decrease from 0.3052 to 0.2932, which is a 3.93% decrease over prior year adopted debt service millage rate. The total millage rate is a 2.34% decrease over the prior year adopted millage rates, if you combine both rates. There's an increase for reserve appropriations of $42,832. Fire assessment level remains the same. Employee raises are in the budget. Health care increased cost is in the budget at 3% for the employer and 3% increase for the employee. Two new positions, a staff accountant and a warehouse customer service clerk, part-time position. There's increased street paving in the budget, a total of 172,000 plus grants, totaling approximately 225,000. Library expansion is included in the budget, history museum, preliminary design and services, 
senior city, sen, excuse me, can't speak tonight, I guess. Um, senior center preliminary design service for grant application, a new public works facility, rebuilding for the seaplane base and marina, three new police cars, cemetery improvements with restrooms, rebuilding of the Wooten Wonderland Children's Playground, expanded Christmas light program, and expanded um, fireworks for July 4th. And just as uh, also put in the record is the timeline for the budget process. July 3rd, City Council held a budget workshop and we staff presented the budget to Council. July 17th, Council held the budget workshop and the enterprise and special funds were presented to Council. July 24th, city, the City Council held a workshop and set the maximum tentative millage rate. August 7th, the City Council held a budget workshop and staff presented the capital improvement plan. August 21st, City Council held a budget workshop. September 6th, the City Council held the first public hearing to approve the tentative millage rate. All funds are balanced and again, the millage rate before you is 6.950 for the general operating fund and 0.2932 for the debt service, um, voted debt service. If you have, we'll leave that to council to either approve or not approve the, budget, the village rate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hood. We do have two speakers, and as we do in public hearings, we also open it up to the general public. Darwin Baston, if you could come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. Uh, my name is Darwin Baston, and I live at 331 uh, Lakeshore Drive. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to uh, offer some comments today. Um, and I also want to thank John um, uh, and Lori and, and Brett, who spent a, what well, I would consider, a substantial amount of their day. Um, tolerating the questions and uh, the comments that I had yesterday is uh, it's very, very helpful. Um, I would hope that everybody could have come away with the same general understanding of what's trying to be done uh, for the city and by uh, the council and, and by the city management uh, that causes it to be you know, a, a great place to live. Um, my comments are, I don't want them to be interpreted as criticisms. I want them to be interpreted as issues and thoughts and, and, and some suggestions that uh, are, part, are meant really to be helpful, not meant to be critical, and certainly not meant to be personal in any way, shape, or form. So, with that. Um, I will say this, I think that Terry Barris probably takes first prize in the size of the budget that's measured by the number of pages. Um, I'm not sure John may have that record from some other some other places, but uh, in terms of its size, and it is a very 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 large document to go through. It's too bad that it can no longer be put on, or at this time at least, can be put on line because that would give everybody you know a chance to do it. So if anybody wants to get it, you come down to pick it up and thank somebody for copying 500 pages, so that, you know, so that uh, we can look at it. Um, the budget reflects a very, very, very aggressive program. Uh, having uh, had John explain yesterday where the city has come from over the last five or six years, I've been here seven years. Okay. Uh, I've probably been absent from anything like this for um, a, a large part of that because of my responsibilities and the great amount of traffic that they end up doing. But it is a very aggressive uh, program. Um, and it does reflect the uh, plan that was put forth several years ago uh, for downtown so that uh, the result would be that it would be uh, attractive and a better place to try to get people to come. And the budget reflects that. Uh, but I think also it reflects it by um, observation and driving around. Um, and if you, if you get four blocks away from downtown, it's a different whole different picture that you can get uh, from, you know, from, from the rest of the community. Uh, and I'm not saying that that is, uh, uh, that that is a bad thing, but it, but it clearly is reflected in the budget. Um, as one example, 
I, I did go through the 500 pages, by the way. And, and um, I, as, as one example for me, um, with one and a half employees that's involved in paving two and a half miles of streets last year, and you have 60 plus miles, uh, and the total expenditure of $172,000, and even the planned expenditure for the next year of $225,000, I think it's importantly small relative to what it should be. If you want people to love you, give them good streets to drive on, and, 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 and they will. Um, and I also say that because uh, somebody that I know very clearly lives on a street that um, is in bad need of repair. So I, I you know, and, and compared to, you know, compared to what is expended to downtown, or to reflect that there's four full-time employees at the, you know, at, at, at the pavilion, and I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying that the, between the operational cost there and the debt service cost there, it seems to me like a couple things are just out of proportion. There's a couple things that are happening that I think are very, very good. And um, John and Lori were even the word and they were open to the ideas that we discussed them yesterday. Yes, please, if you could. Yeah, and, 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 and you, if you, want, if you want the people to know what's going on, you can't expect them to dig it out because, you know, I, I worked more than 22 years for two organizations. One of them had 10,000 members. One of them had 100 firm company members. And if you want to know how they feel about things, you got to do a survey. Every once in a while, just have a total independent survey done, send it to them, um, send them a, send them a you know, stamp for turn envelope, and you'll get a lot of returns, and you'll get a lot of thoughts expressed. Mr. Mason, thank you very much. I really appreciate the comments. <laughs> uh, you've exceeded uh, your time. I've exceeded my three minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. but thank you very much. Right, thank you. Appreciate the information. Yeah. Vance Yoakum, if you can come to the podium, state your name and address. Hi, Vance Yoakum. I write the fiscal watchdog blog at fiscalrangers.com. Uh, I wanted to also make some observations about the spending. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I think the, the staff and the city manager are great. But the, the direction of the city council, I think, over the past years and this year, with this budget and millage, is a bit uh, needs some constructive criticism. Um, the uh, I brought this prop here because basically someone buys property in Tavares, and I think they need to have a warning, kind of like on a cigarette package, you know. And so I put a warning on the back of here. Now the city clerk will have a hard time putting this in the keyboard, so I've got a printed copy I'll give you. Uh, but there are, this is like a property buyer's kit for residential homes and commercial buildings in Tavares, Florida area. And I think, you know, I consider you now to be spend a lot city. I look at this budget and the increases, and then you heard the retired folks earlier talk about that they're on a retired fixed income. Uh, you're increasing the water, the wastewater rates 5% for the first two years, and then 3%. Uh, and then you quote an average that's not compounded. Uh, I, and you talk about making money uh, operationally on the pavilion, but you fail to include the allocation for de debt for the building and the facility. That's kind of like uh, well, my Vice Mayor Fister, who just left. Uh, if she broke even on her restaurant operations, but didn't contribute anything towards the rent or the building mortgage. And that, that's what I'm afraid. There's a number of things that I see here that are only partially correct from a conservative accounting and auditing standpoint. Um, you know, Groveland is outsourcing their white water system. Um, the county is outsourcing their fleet management. I've not had, heard any talk about that. When we talk about these uh, department <coughs> budgets, I don't hear that part of the deal for getting these uh, values is that you're setting some sort of a cost reduction goal on the average cost per uh, home or average cost per capita. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, uh, as you've seen, you've been approving high density uh, development proposals um, in areas 
things that are unincorporated and it's just inflamed people out there. You've heard them, they've come here, and you just don't listen to them. You go ahead and do that. I don't know if you've seen the county board meeting where they talked about that uses ISBA, but uh, they uh, they actually are putting in criteria for them are very close to not approving it because of what's happened in this city and because of all the feedback the county commission has gotten on the, your, your, your approval of high density developments uh, that inflame people in the rural areas of this county. Uh, I've got a whole list of other things here, but I, I think uh, I heard that <coughs> the city's got $55 million of debt if the referendum is approved, you're going to, and some other things, you're probably going to get close to uh, $100 million in debt for this city. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> uh, and I've got some things here on transparency. I mentioned them before, but I really think that needs to be addressed because I don't think some of the statements that I've heard here today are completely accurate. Uh, and again, it comes from being a guy who's caught international sales managers misstating uh, operational figures and other things like that. They come from an area where you have accounting statements that reflect you know, a proper business type approach in explaining where your money is going. And so with that, uh, uh, I will just say that you, you're the county tax appraiser, I mean the property appraiser, He's got a sheet up on his website and he shows that your valuations went up 10.15%. So even if you slightly reduced your millage rate, your people are going to be hit with a tax increase because the valuation increases. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yoga. Is there any other request to speak that you have? No more requests to speak. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? State your name and address, and we'll give you three minutes. Okay, my name's Ralph Smith, and my address is 111 Lakeview Lane over Mount Dora. I'm a business owner in Tiberias, as most of you know, Lake Tire Auto, and been there 33 years. And before I get to the context, what I want to say, I want to tell you a little story first. Um, first of all, I was a John Drury fan before it was cool to be a John Drury fan when he was coming. <laughs> I love this guy. He has done... And even my critical, my friends uh, who are the same political persuasion, I'm a critical of John, I always back him because of this right here. The man is honest, he's transparent, and number one, he's not the one who makes the decisions. It's the three of you that are up there now and the other two that aren't when they are here. Uh, he's an idea guy. He's an implementer. He does what y'all tell him to. Now, he may, he may be a better salesman than the average dude, so he gets more stuff done, but that's, that's on y'all to... Uh, to use uh, uh, good discretion as by buying into his ideas and his beliefs and dreams. My argument isn't so much about your budget. I think yours is better than some. I think it could be better. The only thing, and John was kind enough to give me a copy of the budget. I went through the thing and I looked at it and said, oh yeah, look here, here, here. This, now I look back and it's all the things he's already cut. Okay. The only thing I didn't see there, though I, would, I bring the question, is he have a plans for a $520,000 improvement to the, uh, the concession out at uh, bathrooms over there at Woodley. And I don't know, guys, $520,000 builds me a mansion, okay? I don't know that you need bathrooms and concessions stand quite that ostentatious. However, that's the only thing I'm going to gripe about. But I want to give you a quick uh, story real quick. I know I've probably got about a minute and a half left. A friend of mine went over to Uganda. He's a missionary over there. And uh, y'all might know him. His uh, father is Mark Douglas. He's a uh, uh, used to be pastor of church over in Eustace. And in any event, I uh, I was just kind of curious. You know, what's that country all about? Well, their um, their land mass is about equivalent to Georgia and South Carolina. And they have 90 million residents. So imagine that 90 million people, which is what a third, you know, basically uh, two sevenths of what we have here in the U.S. Right. Guess what their per capita, uh, the gross domestic uh, product is, and their per capita income. It's basically equivalent to Lake County's. 90 million people. We got, what, a third of a million? So that basically means the net worth of your average Ugandan is 1 270th of Lake County. Yet somehow, at least since Idi Amin's been gone, for the older ones of you that remember him that used to be the uh, president who ate his own people, the cannibal guy, 
But anyway, uh, since he's been gone, their population increases. In other words, people find a way. So I would just challenge you guys, not so much for this budget. I know you're probably locked in. I'm coming here at the 11th hour to say, hey, drop it another you know, tenth of a mil or something like that, okay? But going forward, always remember, staff will find a way. This guy will find a way, believe me. And just throw one thing out there. I put this on Facebook a little bit ago. I said this a few years ago on Channel 9 regarding the Lake County thing. Um, Connie Mack did this back when he ran against uh, the gentleman he lost uh, to, which was Bill Nelson, who Rick Scott beat this last election term. 1%. Ask every vendor. Cut everybody 1%. Everything you got that you vetted, you've done your homework, done it, do 1%. See where that's at. Start with me. I'm one of your vendors. I'm glad to give it up. And I will promise you, your other vendors will too. Well, they may not do it as voluntarily like I'm doing, but believe it or not, They'll accept it, because if they don't, you'll buy from their competitor who will gladly accept it. So just think outside the box, please, uh, if not tonight, going forward, and try to keep taxes as low as you can in this community, because beyond that, I have nothing bad to say about Tiberias. It is a fine city, it's ran well, and you have a great staff of people, even Bob Tweedy is a good guy. And if I'm going to give one last plug, since it's National Hamburger Day, if the mayor will indulge me, uh, I would recommend go over to uh, Fish Camp, where you can also have a cheeseburger called the Big Mouth Ralph, and you get a fried pickle with that as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Anyone else in the audience? Yes. State your name and address. You just say about a time. Mayor, members of council, Mr. Drury, city staff, Mr. Williams, Gary Santoro, Royal Harbor. I know this has been a stressful time for, for city staff. It always has been. Been there and done that. But all I can say is, job well done. Uh, people should appreciate all of the things that you do in order to put this thing together. And guess what? Tomorrow it starts all over again for next year. But again, <laughs> thank you very much for the job well done. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? All right. Well, council. Okay. I'll make a motion that we, uh, we approve resolution 2019-07, setting the final middle grant for fiscal year 2019-2020. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, open up for discussion. I just, you know, I just want to thank the staff. What a wonderful job that y'all did with this, uh, this council. I know that one of the main priorities we had coming into this budget cycle uh, was to, to lower the millage and that's what we did and we had all these wonderful projects that we were able to accomplish as well and as Mr. Drury pointed out we were able to lower our uh, rate the most of any other city in the entire county. That's wrong. And for that I'm very very proud. You can look on the tax collector or the property appraisers website and you can see it right there. Um, so I'm very very happy about that. So. Um, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3-0. We're going to move on to tab number 11. That would be setting the final budget. Mr. Drury. Two speakers on that. One speaker on that one. No, I covered it. Pancho Compasses, you can open it up. All right, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to be heard? All right. Now, when we had the other the police item, did we have extra money, we have extra money that we needed? Yes, you, would, you, you have an opportunity to des uh, dedicate that to reserves. Uh, or unless you choose something else. I'd like to put it in reserves. I was going to suggest the same thing. So, uh, Ms. Houghton, uh, the money that we save on the, the resource officer, that went in reserves, so we're going to go ahead and keep that. Okay. 18,000. Okay, so that was more that we were able to add to reserves. Yes, that I can give. I had Brent create an alternate resolution just in case of various scenarios we wanted to be prepared. And it looks like you 
your um, reserve appropriations for the year, or the amount you're putting in reserves for the total budget for general fund, will be $60,994. So that's quite a bit up from what we originally had estimated at 35. All right. All right, Council. I'd like to make a motion to adopt Resolution 2019-08, the final budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 with the changes that we just made. Mr. Smith, I heard what you said when you came up to the podium. Um, I, I said this from the very beginning, whether I'm doing a good job or not is up to other people, but there is nothing that we do that is more important than taking your money and figuring out how to spend it. I believe that is the most important thing we do. I take it very, very serious, whether I'm doing a good job or not. Take it is the important. most important, and in my estimation, it's the most important thing we'll do. So I heard every word that you said, sir. Thank you. A second, if I have a second for discussion. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, it's still up for discussion. Any more discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3 0. And with no other business, I'm going to call this meeting adjourned.